<clears throat> uh, hello students, so uh, welcome back to BMM 2253 Engineering Fluid Mechanics Lab. Sorry, Engineering Fluid Mechanics uh, lecture. Uh, so I guess you guys uh, can hear me uh, clearly, perhaps uh, if at any moment during the lecture, if you cannot hear me correctly, uh, let me know if my voice is not coming or something happened, then please let me know. Uh, maybe WhatsApp me is better, OK? Uh, because uh, sometimes teams uh, I cannot see during the lecture. <clears throat> so uh, you guys have gone through the midterm already. So midterm was a total of 65 marks. And we are going to consider only 20% of the total marks. Okay, so we have remaining either project 20% marks and final exam. Sixty percent marks. OK. From what I saw during the midterm uh, checking of exam, OK. Uh, <clears throat> students. Uh, try to uh, solve everything. Uh, very accurately, but the most important thing was try to attempt all questions correctly or try to at least attempt all questions. Most of the students. Attempt question number one. A, B, C, D. Question number two. OK. But question number three, uh, around 90% of the students uh, only attempt part E. They did not attempt part B. They did not attempt part C. And both of them were very, very easy. <clears throat> so when they did not attempt part number B and part number C, 15 marks were gone. And that's a problem. OK. Uh, so my advice to students. Advice to students is that always, always, always. Always. Attempt. All questions. Even if it is incorrect. Even you don't know answer. Even if it is incorrect. It doesn't matter correct or incorrect. I will always give marks. This is a very, very important point for all students. Even if you. 
don't know the answer still you will get the marks for thinking you will get the marks for writing the steps you will get the marks for writing the formula so never ever leave blank if you leave blank i cannot give you marks okay it is impossible to give you any marks if the question has been left completely and 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 try to try answer long numericals at the end try to answer long numericals at the end of the question paper in the last moment okay so first attempt easy things then attempt difficult things So these were uh, some advice for you for your final examination. OK. <clears throat> now I'm going to move on to today's lecture, which is momentum equation. Chapter number six of your book. Momentum equation. So we are going to continue momentum. Equation. The question is, why do we need equations? The first question is, why question? Why we need equations? <coughs> okay, I can ask anybody, why do we need equations? The reason why we need equation is to to solve for certain variable or a parameter a property this is why we need equation <clears throat> to solve for certain variable parameter or property okay why do we need to solve because we have got engineering problems engineering problems okay the property can be density mass volume specific gravity the parameter can be force, pressure, momentum. Okay. These are some things that we need to solve by equation method. So when we have got engineering problems, when we have got engineering problems, okay, it means that we have to find some parameter. We need to calculate some variable we need to calculate some property so in order to solve engineering problems we have got three in fluid mechanics we have got three systems system number one is differential system number two is experimental And system number three is control volume. These are the three things by which we can solve engineering problems to determine these parameters. Engineering problems such as a pipe, and we want to know the flow rate of a pipe or the pressure in a pipe. OK, you've got flow rate. Or you've got a rocket launcher with a rocket having three nozzles. 
okay and you want to find the thrust force ft which is generated by the nozzles in the fluid so these are different types of engineering problems and these types of engineering problems require us to determine the force pressure flow rate velocity acceleration speed and these engineering problems can be solved with the help of softwares with the help of simple calculations with the help of experiments etc so the differential uh, solution is basically based on differential equations and it requires numerical methods numerical methods to solve the differential equations okay and this requires a lot of computerized compute computer codes and simulations doing experiment by hand and checking each property at every point is also time consuming so experimental approach is time consuming but it is highly accurate <clears throat> and the third thing is called finite control volume method the finite control volume approach is basically something which we can approximate approximate using different tools and formulas we use different tools and formulas to approximate and approach towards solution we assume things flow is steady flow is compressible flow is incompressible flow is uniform density is uniform so we assume things and simplify our equation so when we assume things and simplify our equations then uh, we are looking for control volume method or finite control volume approach so this is something that is used in general in fluid mechanics to solve for generalized engineering problems which are related to fluid mechanics and using control volume method we are going to derive our momentum equation and the momentum equation is going to give us the engineering problem or solution to find different parameter we will get solution to find force momentum or that is generated in a fluid pressure system that is generated in a fluid mechanics uh, engineering problem so for example we have got a pipe got inlet we have got outlet and if i want to determine the mass flow rate okay if the quantity mass flow rate has to be determined m in and m out then i have got a very simple equation which is continuity equation so the simple continuity equation
can be used to solve this engineering problem. The simple continuity equation can be used to solve this engineering problem. And continuity equation is D M control volume over DT is equals to summation of all the mass flow rates in minus summation of all the mass flow rates out. Notice the term CV control volume. So we are using the control volume approach. Control volume approach to find the approximate solution. So we are going to create a control volume for this system. And then we are going to approximate our solution by assuming different types of assumptions. So for mass flow rate, I can use continuity equation. If mass flow rate is unknown, if velocity is unknown. So using continuity equation, I can determine the area inlet outlet. I can determine the mass flow rate. I can determine the volume flow rate. I can determine the velocity. <clears throat> but then in the previous video based lectures, you heard about Bernoulli equation. What was Bernoulli equation? P1 plus 1 by 2 so V1 square plus rho g set 1 is equals to p2 plus 1 by 2 <coughs> rho v2 square plus rho g z2. So this Bernoulli equation is going to give us solutions to pressure, velocity, elevation okay and it will give us density if density is unknown so if i want to determine the pressure of a system at the outlet and at the inlet p1 and p2 then i will use bernoulli equation <laughs> <clears throat> now the question is if I want to determine the value of force or torque, then what should I do? So the question is what about the force which is generated by this fluid? Force. How will I determine that how many forces are present and uh, how, what is the value of force? So to do, to determine the value of force, we have a momentum equation or law of conservation of momentum or law of conservation of linear momentum.
which is summation of all forces with vector direction is equals to t over dt integral control volume rho v vector dv plus integral control surface rho v vector dot product of v vector into direction vector n into dA. This is the linear momentum equation. What does it mean? Sum of all external forces in control volume is equals to time rate of change of linear momentum. This is from the book. For control volume plus The net flow rate of linear momentum out of control surface. The net flow rate of linear momentum out of control surface. Remember that if this is my control volume. If this is control volume, then the boundaries are. Control surface. Boundaries are control surface. So it is a combination. The linear momentum equation is a combination of both control surface and control volume. So by simplifying this equation, by simplifying this equation, by by simplifying this equation. We will solve engineering problems. To get the value of. Of net force. Summation of F vector. So we are going to simplify this equation and by in doing so. We will be able to get the value of net force which is acting on a system.
So here you can see in the slides that we have got uh, a Pelton uh, wheel turbine and then we have got a rocket. This rocket has got two booster rockets and each of these rocket has got nozzle and through this nozzle fuel is being burned out. So as the fluid, okay, when the fuel burns, fluid exits the nozzle and when the fluid exits the nozzle, it creates an upward thrust force. Okay, so if I am going to. So the fluid is moving in this direction. The gas velocity, flow rate, all is going in downward direction. But you can see that a force is created and upward thrust force is generated. FT thrust force upward is generated which is going to move the rocket upwards so this force can be calculated with the help of momentum equation this upward thrust force then uh, you can see that we have got a uh, uh, turbine okay and then we've got a stream of water which strikes the turbine OK, and this causes the turbines to rotate. OK, now how much is the torque produced? OK, the torque produced can be calculated with the help of momentum equation. OK, so these are the engineering problems that we can solve with the help of momentum equation. So let us move on to second slide. Momentum is a product of velocity vector V vector and scalar mass M. M is scalar quantity, so it does not have any direction. The momentum must be a vector that the points of the same direction as velocity vector. So if I say that momentum is G, then momentum is also a vector and the direction of the momentum is same as the direction of velocity. Okay. Momentum is related to the Newton first law, second law and third law. The conservation of momentum principle is the momentum of a system remains constant when the net force acting on it is zero and thus the momentum of such system is conserved. So first we need to understand this first law, second law and third law. And then we need to proceed. So momentum. In simple word is mass into. Velocity. <clears throat> so in vector of notation G is momentum is equals to scalar mass into velocity. Vector. So how is first law, second law and third law going to help us? First law. Of motion. The Newton's first law states that a body at rest remains at rest and a body in motion remains in motion at the same velocity in a straight line when the net force acting on it is zero. Therefore, a body tends to preserve its states of inertia. Which means that. If a body is at rest. Means velocity is equals to zero. Then it remains at rest. It will not move and the velocity will remain zero after some amount of time. If a body is moving at a constant velocity. Let's say V is equals to 2 meter per second. OK, it means that. Also the change of velocity with respect to time is equals to zero. 
because the velocity is not changing. Velocity is not changing with respect to time. So when the velocity is not changing with respect to time, then it means that dv over dt is equals to zero. It means that in these two cases, first law states that a body remains in rest, remains at rest, and a body in motion, okay, a body which is at a constant motion remains at the same velocity in a straight line when the net force acting on it is equal to zero. If all the forces accumulate to become zero, then either the body is at rest or it is continuously moving, not changing speed. This is first law of Newton. We move on to second law. Second law states that <clears throat> the acceleration of a body, acceleration of a body is directly proportional to the force and it is inversely proportional to the mass of a body. Okay. Hence, we can derive that force is equals to mass multiplied by acceleration. In vector notation, force vector is equals to mass into acceleration vector. And the third law states that when a body exerts a force on a second body, the second body exerts an equal and opposing force on the first body. So if a body is exerting a force on a second body, then an equal and opposing force is created by the second body in reaction. So F1 I apply and the reaction is FR. So Newton third law states that if a body apply a force on another body, then the second body has an equal and opposite reaction. So F1 or FR is equals to minus F1. Equal and opposite. So similarly, in fluid mechanics, if a water body or if a stream of water strikes a plate, this is a plate, then this stream of water has got some amount of force. And when the water strikes the plate, then because of the force of the fluid, because of fluid force, an equal and opposite reaction force FR is generated. So in fluid mechanics problem, if I want to know that how much the water which is striking the plate, how much force is generated, then momentum equation is going to help me out. And this momentum equation is going to help me out 
And this is the case applied when the water strikes the Pelton wheel, when the water strikes the turbine, which is used to create or which is used to generate hydroelectric power, then how much is the force or torque generated? This momentum equation is going to solve this equation and help me out. Okay, similarly, how much is this gas producing a reaction? Then momentum equation is going to help me out. So the fluid force transforms into a rigid body force. Rigid body force. And this transformation, this transformation is something that we will calculate using momentum equation. How the fluid force, how a fluid which strikes a surface, then how much the surface basically uh, experiences a force, how much reaction force is generated by the surface is something that we are going to study in this topic. So all three laws, law number one, law number two, and law number three will be used to derive different solutions to different momentum problems. So as per slide, since force is equals to mass into acceleration, and we know we know that acceleration is change in velocity with respect to time. So acceleration is equals to dv over dt. This implies that force vector or summation of all the forces is equals to mass into acceleration vector. So force vector is equals to mass into dv over dt where v is the vector. So force is also equals to dmv over dt both can be written the product of mass with the velocity is called linear momentum. The product of mass with velocity is called linear momentum. This also states that rate of change of momentum is equal to net force acting the body. This applies to this equation both.
<clears throat> and this is also called Newton second law. Conservation of momentum principle. This also means momentum of a system is constant. The momentum will be constant only if net force acting on the system is zero. A momentum will not change with respect to time. A momentum will be constant. A momentum will not vary with respect to time if d over dt is not changing, which means that the net force acting on the system is equal to zero. And this is called conservation So I'm going to show you some uh, video uh, with example. 
Dr. Nasul Hadi video. Open system sound. Or the movement of the particle, which is the momentum. You probably still didn't get what I'm trying to say, but let's have a look a few pictures and videos. Look at this fireman. He's standing on the ground properly to hold the water hose. Or if he's not properly doing that, it could be like this. This is good. So what is actually happening to the water hose? Yeah, you're right. Because of the pressure of the water hose and the high velocity of the water going out from the hose that makes the hose cannot stand still. But why the hose is wiggling and cannot stand still? And it's funny, but something scientifically that we have to figure out. That is why the fireman has to position himself properly to hold the water hose because of what? Because of the pressure of the water that due to the atmospheric plus the velocity of the water. This is a space shuttle that is lifted up due to the thrust that generated by the rocket engines as the result of the momentum change. And if you can imagine the fuel and the gas generate a very high thrust into the engine that can lift tons kilogram of rockets. Total F equal to M times A, right? Total force equal to M, the mass of the rocket times A, acceleration of the rocket. The A here is generated from the engines due to the fuel supply to the engine accelerated from zero to 2000 meter per second just want to share with you a space shuttle launch minus 90 seconds and counting all systems are going we're about 90 seconds from the launch of space shuttle discovery T-minus 60 seconds. Look, 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 look carefully at the engine. We are transferring to orbiter internal power at this time. So interesting. You look carefully at the engine. Look, look at the smoke that running out from the engine. Yep, the position, the engine. Look, look, look. Yeah, we have a go for auto sequence start. Discovery's onboard computers are all right, all right. They are igni the igniting the engine. T minus 17 seconds and yep, 7 seconds. 15. C. 12. 11. 12. 10. 9. Uh, ignite the engine. Look at the thrust. Look at the thrust. 2, 1. Use the ignition and lift off of the space of the discovery. All right, look. So this was just an example, a small example of the application of momentum. Now, before we continue with momentum, as I said, uh, we need to understand about control volume approach. Okay. Control. Volume. Approach.
So there are basically three types of control volume. Stationary. Moving. And deforming. There are three types of control volume, which means that we can solve three different types of problems. Three types of problems can be solved. So here number one is an example of fixed control volume. We have got a water hose. This water hose is fixed on a tripod. You can see the water hose is fixed on a tripod and we have chosen a fixed control volume in which the control volume is not moving, it is stationary. The body is stationary, so the control volume is stationary. So when we determine the reaction force, so when I want to determine the reaction force, so the fluid fluid is moving like this. So maybe the reaction force is generated by it like this, FR. So when we do want to determine the reaction force acting on the tripod, and this tripod is holding this nozzle, okay? Then a natural choice for the control volume is the one which passes perpendicularly through the nozzle exit and through the bottom of the tripod. I want to determine the forces on the tripod leg and it passes through the ex exit of the fluid exactly at this point. So this is a fixed control volume example, fixed or stationary control volume example. Now there are system in which the body is moving. This is an example in which the body is moving. When the body is moving, then obviously the fluid is moving. So when the body and fluid both are moving, then we need to determine the control volume, which is also moving with the same speed as that of body. And this type of control volume is called moving control volume. When the body is moving at a certain velocity, so the control volume has also a certain velocity which is called volume of control volume VCV. And then we've got the velocity of the uh, relative velocity of the fluid. And then you've got the velocity of the fluid itself. So these are, this is an example of a moving control volume. And then number three, we have got deforming control volume, deforming control volume, in which you can see we have got an example of a piston and a cylinder. This is the cylinder and this inside is got the piston. So the piston is basically going to move up and move down. So the control volume that I have selected will be changing continuously. The in upper part will not change, but the lower part will be changing continuously. So this is an example of a moving uh, or a deforming control volume, and it is basically more convenient to allow the control volume to move or deform. And this is useful for basically engine or rocket engine thrust. Sorry, this is deforming and this, so this is the moving control volume is useful for uh, thrust of rockets. Okay, and this one deforming control volume is useful for engine. Okay. So it is very important 
that a wise choice of control volume is selected, which comprises of space between the top piston and the cylinder. So these were example of three different types of control volume. So when when we are going to solve momentum equation, when we are going to solve for the force, then selection of control volume and control surfaces of a system is very important. So before we move on, before we proceed, it is very important for us to study about the control volume, different types of control volume, and how do we select a control volume. So we should select control volume and control surfaces very, very accurately and importantly. It should include the body, it should include the inlet of the fluid, it should include the outlet of the fluid. So we are going to take uh, 10 minutes break and then we will resume the lecture at uh, 3.07 p.m. So we will take a break of about 12 minutes.
OK, so we are going to start our uh, resume our lecture. OK. So as you can see in the slide, we have got an equation. Force. Is equals to. M dot. V2 minus V1. So the question is how we get this equation. How did we get this equation? So in order to determine this equation, we go back to second law. Rate of change of momentum is equals to net force acting on body. What is net force? Net force is equals to summation of F vector. What is change of momentum? This is equals to G2 vector minus G1 vector. What is the momentum is? Mass flow rate into. Sorry, mass into velocity. Velocity. So G2 is equals to M2 V2. G1 is equals to M1 V1. Change of momentum is delta G. Okay. So delta G is equals to G2 minus G1 is equals to M2 V2 minus M1 V1. Now the second law states rate of change of momentum rate R A T E. Rate means delta G with respect to time. Delta G over T. So in our case delta G over T is equals to M2 over T V2 minus M1 V1 over T. Now you know that M over T is flow rate. This is M2 dot. This is M1 dot. So delta G per unit time is equals to M2 dot V2 minus M1 dot V1. If this is in outlet, this is inlet. Then delta G over T is equals to M dot out V out minus M dot in V in. So 
रेट ऑफ चेंज ऑफ मोमेंटम विद रिस्पेक्ट टू टाइम इज इक्वल्स टू द नेट फोर्स व्हिच इज एक्टिंग ऑन अ बॉडी सो द नेट फोर्स व्हिच इज एक्टिंग ऑन अ बॉडी इज इक्वल्स टू एम डॉट आउट वी आउट माइनस एम डॉट इन वी इन if we have got a conduit circular conduit where area 1 is equals to area 2 flow incompressible which means density 1 is equals to density 2 then our formula becomes summation of forces is equals to m dot v2 minus v1 because mass flow rate is same so if m out is equals to m in then we use this formula this is generalized formula so from this equation we have we now can simplify the right hand side or the momentum part simplify already momentum part is simplified already now we move on to the force part what is this force all about what is this summation of all internal and external we need to get the answer to this what is delta uh, summation f
So when we talk about summation of all forces, we have two types of forces. Number one is body force. Number two is surface force. Number one is summation of all body force. And number two is summation of all surface force. The body force acts on control volume. The surface force acts on control surface. <clears throat> so if we have got an arbitrary body, okay, then all the forces which are related to the internal control volume are determine using the volume of the small differential control volume d v and all the control surface forces are related to the surface so this surface forces are determined by control surface, small differential force, F surface, acting on a very small area, DA. So that is why we have got internal body force, external surface force. So when I'm going to study about pipes, Then one will be force due to fluid. And one would be the force due to pressure. That is acting on the surface. So we will look about this later on in the slides or in the lecture. The most common type of body force is gravity force. Some of the most common type of forces are gravity force, which acts downwards. Other types of body forces are electrical, magnetic, but we are going to ignore these in this course. Assume they are not applied in our problem. We assume electrical and magnetic forces are not applied. Now the surface forces also different types. Number one, pressure. Number two, viscous. Number three, other forces. So 
we are going to use in our course gravity force, pressure force, viscous force, and then later on we will ignore other force. So our equation now becomes the mention of all forces total is equals to summation of all the forces due to gravity. Gravity is a body force. Plus summation of all the forces due to pressure. Plus summation of all the forces due to viscosity or viscous. Plus summation of all the forces due to others. And this is called surface. <clears throat> F others comprises of reaction forces. Forces at bolts, cables, walls, etc. So actually we cannot ignore others forces actually. This is very important. So we are going to look at an example. We've got a faucet. Okay. And we have got the flow in this direction. This part is open to atmosphere. So number one thing is we need to make control volume and control surface. So we create a control volume with a control surface. According to this equation, F others is reaction force FR. So when the water is moving in this direction, because of momentum, a reaction force FR is generated. 
so we have to include fr in the direction opposite to the direction of flow so let's say this is fr resultant fr then we have got fluid inside this fluid has got a weight also so this is w then we have got the pressure which is acting inside the pipe inside the pipe is let's say pressure p1 and then we have the atmospheric pressure because the this part and this part is open to atmosphere so we use this as p18 atmospheric So these are the forces, summation of all forces acting on control volume. Now there are so many forces that now we need to simplify. How we simplify P atmospheric is equals to zero or P gauge at the rate atmospheric pressure is equals to zero. So all calculations will be done in gauge. So when pre-atmosphere is gone, then we have simplified our control volume. Or W and pressure P1. Assuming exit of flow at P atmosphere where P gauge is equals to zero. So using this assumption, we simplify our problem. Assumption one, A one. Assuming exit of flow, exit. Assuming exit of flow is at P atmospheric because the flow is flowing outside the atmosphere into the atmosphere. So assuming exit of the flow at P atmospheric and here the gauge pressure is equals to zero. Assumption number Assumption number two, lump sump. We lump sum, we lump sum unknown pressure we 
ये लमसम अनोन प्रेशर प्लस विस्कस फोर्स इनटू वन रिएक्शन फोर्स and when the control volume is very small then we ignore weight also because the force is so strong that the weight is not taken into account a3 so our equation becomes summation of for all forces is equals to gravity or body forces ignore pressure forces available viscous force and other forces converted into reaction forces so this becomes forces due to pressure force due to pressure plus the reaction forces which include the viscous force surface force and other forces so this is our simplification and this is equals to m dot v2 minus v1 in vector notation simplification so let us solve an example and only then we will realize uh, how we simplify this We have three cases, the fluid flow moving and strikes a stationary plate. This plate is stationary. Case number two, the velocity of the fluid with a certain velocity strikes a plate and this plate is moving with a velocity u. And case number three, the fluid flow, it strikes a inclined plate. So we have got three cases and now we have to solve these three cases. <clears throat> so let's move on to case number one. Before we move on to case number one, please read this slide. When a fluid speeds or slows down, inertial forces occur. Such forces may be produced by either due to a change in the magnitude or the direction of the flow. Any changes in the vector quantity produces acceleration. Forces due to pressure can be ignored, especially for unconfined flow, flow without a border, jet or water jet. So this is a pipe and then I've got a flow inside a water. So this is flow with border. And if the water exits, Okay, there is no border. Okay, and this is called jet or water jet. In this cases, if the control volume is selected outside the boundary, then here the pressure or is zero because it is atmospheric pressure and the force due to pressure Fp is also equals to zero. 
So if I select a control volume from here to here, then we got problem because this is border. So let me draw and explain this again. So now we have got when we talk about summation of all forces, we have got force due to pressure. And we have got force due to reaction FR all vector quantities. OK, <clears throat> now I have got a pipe. OK, pipe is means border. And then. This is the pressure. P1. The flow is moving with the velocity V1. Because of the flow, a reaction force opposite according to the Newton third law, a reaction force in the opposite direction is created. FR. OK. So here the formula is F is equals to pressure force plus reaction force. So summation of all FP plus summation of all FR. But now let's extend this problem. If the control volume selected is like this. Which comprises of a border. Now I have again a pipe. The water exit exits the pipe. This is no border case. Water exit the pipe already, so I use control volume which is outside the pipe. When I use the water outside the pipe, then as you can see in the book and in the lecture, the summation of FP becomes zero because of P atmospheric. At P atmospheric, P gauge at P atmospheric is equals to zero. So only one force is available, which is the reaction force FR. The so summation of all forces is equals to summation of all the reaction forces. What are the reaction forces? FRX and FRY. X direction and Y direction. So reaction forces in X direction and reaction forces in Y direction. This is what happened. So these are two cases very, very important that you should remember. Case number. Control volume has got a pipe or a border. And case number two. Control volume does not have a border. So let us solve for our case number one. Jet. On a. Plate. Normal. Jet is normal to the plate. So I've got a conduit. There is pressure. P1. The. Jet exits. And strikes the plate stationary plate. P1. 
this is z velocity v1 and then what happens so this is the case so the fluid is moving through the conduit it exits the conduit strikes the plate now the fluid exits the conduit at a velocity v1 but when it is going to strike the plate the velocity will be equal to zero v2 x will be zero okay so velocity v1 has two component v1 x v1 y and v2 also has two component v2 x and v2 y when the flow is moving it exits at a velocity v1 and when it strikes then the x component of the velocity 2 equals to 0 it cannot move beyond this plate that's simplification number 1 now we intelligently take control volume outside the conduit this is my control volume pv reaction force reaction force is going to be developed on the plate okay so reaction force fr on the plate in the horizontal direction so given that we have got mass flow rate m dot okay initial velocity is v1 this is equals to v1x because there is no direction of y component of the velocity final velocity v2 x is equals to 0 okay so summation of all forces equals to only is equals to for summation of all the forces due to pressure plus summation of all the reaction forces fr now we should remind the coordinate system because we are using vector so we should have x positive y positive this is our coordinate system now notice that our control volume is outside the conduit so this we can ignore or zero we are talking about p atmospheric so we are only left with fr <coughs> since we know that delta f is equals to m dot v2 minus v1 so let's take the x direction so summation of all fx in x direction is equals to m dot v2 x minus v1 x v2 x is 0 because it strikes the surface so summation of all forces is equals to m dot minus v1 x okay since m dot is to rho a v1 
this implies that summation of fx is equals to rho a v1 into minus v1x. Hence, V1 is equals to V1x plus V1y, and there is no y component, so V1 is equals to V1x. This implies that summation of fx is equals to rho a V1 square minus in the form of minus. And this fx, we need to include summation of fx is equal to summation of fr. fr is equal to minus fr. So minus fr is equal to minus rho a v1 square. This, this cancel. So fr is equal to rho a v1 square. The direction is if FR is this as selected in the diagram. This is the formula for stationary plate. Imagine that if the plate is moving, so this plate is moving with a velocity u. Okay, so if the plate is moving, then we need to subtract the velocity of the plate or the moving plate. So the formula becomes F is equal to M dot V1X and FR is equal to rho A V1 minus U whole square. So here we are applying engineering mechanics. We are applying vector and we are applying statics. And then we are applying fluid mechanics assumptions. Fluid mechanics assumptions And here we are using control volume approach for approximations. So when we use approximations, then this big formula for a special case, this big formula is converted into only FR is equals to rho A V1 square by approximation assumptions of control volume approach 
we change this big formula to this one. I would recommend that you guys go through the book Sinjin. I would recommend that you guys go through the book Sinjin. Chapter number six. Because this is a little bit of difficult topic. You need to read again and again why we are going to make assumptions, especially assumptions part. Assumptions part read again and again. OK. <clears throat> so in the next uh, lecture, we will go through flat plate with angle to the jet. And then we will go through uh momentum equation in which we need to consider the pressure also okay so we here we are considering the pressure fpx is the pressure fpy y component of pressure so we have reaction force and pressure force both which should be included and then we will go through some exercise in the next next after hari raya but this is a very complex uh, chapter and uh, we have to go through some practice. So please go through flat plate on flat plate normal to the jet and also just self study flat plate with angle to the jet and self study some of the slides that you can understand. Go through the book also and uh, yeah, submit your lecture notes on Kalam of what we have learned today. It is important to understand the theory so that it is easy to simplify and solve the problems. OK. OK, so thank you guys. Uh, Salamat Hari Raya and see you. Uh, maybe next class or maybe after Hari Raya. OK, I'm not sure, but I will let you know. Uh, and we will solve the exercises after the day, definitely. Thank you, and uh, see you in the next class. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you, sir.